Tonight, I want to talk about something that really is about ourselves and looking inward and being able to really, even though we allow other people to speak into our lives, there's scripture that shows us that we need to be able to in turn do self-examination on our own heart. In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, it says, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So again, we've been talking about letting other people speak into our lives, but there's this important part of our walk with God where we need to look inward and do self-examination. I would say that in the workplace, even in the natural sense, I don't know if any one of you in your work or in your school, you've had to do like a self-assessment. Like, how do you feel like you've done in these different areas, right? So it's even important in the, ah, these dang bugs. It flew at you too. You're scared. See, I'm not the only, <laughs> I'm not the only scared one. It's so important, though, that we're able to do this. And this scripture even talks about before you even take communion, that we look inside of our heart and not do it in an unworthy manner. I was kind of thinking, thinking of it as like, okay, has anyone ever like videoed you and then you watch the video back for like the first time and you're like, listen to your voice and you're like, that is not the way that I sound. Has anyone ever had that like revelation? Like my voice sounds like that. Like I remember the first time, like the first time that I actually really remember it my friends and I, we liked to take our like big video cameras at the time with our VHS tapes and we would like just make up stories and like like act them out as if we were like in the real movies or whatever. And I was always the one like behind the camera. But for some reason like behind the scenes, the B-roll, I was like, I said, shut up, Britain. That was my friend's name, Britain. Britain. And when we were watching the tape back and I said that, I was like, I sound like that? Like, I sound so annoying. And then, to make matters even worse, because that was just my speaking voice, I sing all the time. And again, I just think I, like, know what I sound like, right? So one time we're getting ready to, like, get ready to record and do some stuff in, like, Peru and El Salvador and stuff. And this one guy, his name Grant, he was like, hey, you know, I want to record you and I want you to listen back. Because it's really good if you, like, listen to yourself and then you can kind of critique yourself. And I was like, Psh, easy, you know. He's like, what's your favorite song at the time? And I was like, Hot and Cold by Katy Perry. Like, this is like, you know, so long ago. I don't even know. Some of you guys probably weren't even born by them. But no, I'm just kidding. But like, so I'm in like the recording studio. And again, I'm thinking to myself, like I sound like Katy Perry. I'm like, yeah, change your mind. You know, I'm like, hey, you know, whatever. And then I listen back to it. And it was literally just like, you change your mind like a girl. Change his clothes. Like, it was so bad. Like, so bad, right? I don't even know if that sounds bad to you guys, but whatever. I just remember listening back to myself. And I was just like, I sound like that. But that really helped me in my singing career. Not that I have a singing career, but it helped me listening back to myself. Because when we kind of just look and see ourselves in one way and we can't really like truly look at it right it's kind of like when you take like an enneagram test or whatever or whatever myers-briggs you know per, all these personalities you like take it the way that you like hope that you are kind of thing but if you had someone else take and really like assess you for who you really are might be a little bit different so me recording myself I listened back and I was like, dang, I do not sound anything like Katy Perry. Like, I can't even get like an Ashley Simpson out of that. Like, what's going on? You know, back, who, I know, right? <laughs> Jessica Simpson, you know, pieces, all the pieces, pieces of me. Anyone know it? Yeah, okay, thanks, one person. That's exactly what she sounds like, right? So all that to say, right, is when I listened back, I was really able to take my voice and say like, wow, super boring. Like I need like inflection here. I need dynamics here. I need, you know, I'll just add some character here. But we need to do that with our lives. We need to look inward and do this self-examination. Again, we allow other people to speak into our lives. But even sometimes people will say like, just, you know, this week there's people in my life that I, I allow, <laughs> allow, but really to speak into my life. And it's like that iron sharpens iron thing. But when someone speaks into your life, 
you have the opportunity to put up a wall and basically get on the defensive about it. Or you can look into your heart and say, is there a place that I need to change? Is there an attitude that needs to be fixed? Is there a hard heart that needs to be softened? Is there a place in my life that I have angst against someone else or bitterness against someone else? And this self-examination is so important. And like I said, because even in this verse, saying that like don't even take communion because if you take communion without examining yourself, you're taking communion in an unworthy manner. So it just goes to show the importance of reflection and looking inward and being able to self-examine ourselves. or I use the word self-examine, but like assess ourselves and really be honest with ourselves and what we have going on inside of us. In Luke 5, 8, this story is about, they were out fishing, they weren't getting anything, right? And Jesus comes out and he's like, hey, let me jump in your boat and like put out, a, like pull it out, like just put it out a little bit, you know, and then the echo of the water will help me project my voice and I'm going to speak to all these people. And he tells them to throw out their nets and they get all these fish and it was talking about how they have all this fish, right? And in this scripture, Simon Peter says, it says when when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. I have over this know yourself. What do I mean by know yourself? Well, we have to be honest with who we are. We have to be honest with our intentions. We have to be honest with where our heart is. And like I mentioned earlier, it can kind of be like when you take, again, one of those test about yourself, not just answering it for who you want to be or who you aspire to be. It's great to have those aspirations, like I want to become everything that God has called me to be. Obviously, we should aspire to be that. But being honest with ourselves for where we are now and say, where are the places in my heart that I need to really fix or I need to grasp hold of or I need to let people hold me accountable in this area. So Simon Peter here in this instance, he saw a miracle that Jesus said and he said, depart for I'm a sinful man. You've ever heard the phrase fixing your problem. The first part to fixing your problem is actually acknowledging that you've had a problem or you have a problem, has anyone, I think that's like an AA thing, I don't even know, but I've heard that before, like the first part to fixing the problem is just acknowledging that you have a problem. If we can't even acknowledge that we have a problem, if we can't acknowledge that we have bitterness towards someone, or if we can't acknowledge that we have things going on in our heart that could be problematic to our walk with God, we're never going to be able to move forward. We have to know ourselves. So it's kind of like what what condition is my heart in right now? What are the thoughts that are going on inside my head? What are the intentions behind why I'm doing what I'm doing? This is a big one. What are the parts of me that I have going on that no one else sees? What are the thoughts in my mind that no one else can hear? Because it's those parts that only we know, obviously God knows them. But it's only those parts because See, if I go and I do something so totally stupid in front of my friend, my friend can come and say, Ashley, you did something so totally stupid, right? Because they saw it happen. But how many of you know no one knows besides God what's going on inside my heart? So how could a friend challenge me on that area if I never let anyone see that area? No one knows the thoughts that are going on inside of your mind, so no one's able to challenge you on those thoughts. That's why it's important that we know ourselves, that we know our thoughts, that we know our heart, that we know our intention. It's, in knowing ourselves, it's important for that part to even have this self-examination. So being honest with ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, all these different questions. And I mean, apply it to who you are and the things that you do. But it's like, am I the best friend that I could be? Take it to the next level. Not only am I the best friend in a natural sense, but am I the best friend in a spiritual sense? Because there's a natural side of just being there for a friend. But then as a Christian, there's a spiritual side that has to be this spiritual... Um, I can't think of the word, but help to your friend, right? If you're a Christian, not only should I just be hanging out with a friend and doing my part of like giving and receiving, but praying with your friend, asking if there's things that you can pray for, challenging them in certain areas. So are, am I the best friend that I could be? Or am I the best 
worker that I could be. When I go and show up to my job, and, you know, am, am I stewarding that area, right? All these different areas that we have in our lives, we have to look inside and know ourselves and be honest with ourselves. I was watching this show on Netflix. <sighs> what is it called? Madam Secretary. Has anyone watched it? Probably not. But I'm on like season five. <laughs> I know it's funny because I've told I've shared this before, but like I always just watch whatever. Like I never had like this like anything about watching anything. <laughs> Rated R. It never bothered me, right? But all of a sudden, like I don't even know how many months ago it was, I was like, man, God just totally convicted me on the things that I was watching. Because you can get in your like vortex on Netflix and nothing's rated anything so you can just start watching it. So God totally convicted me. So I'm very limited because everything that comes out these days is just filled with garbage, right? So I'm watching Madam Secretary. I've resorted to that. Five seasons because there ain't anything else for me to watch except for cheesy Christmas films that are out now. But I was watching Madam Secretary. And there's this guy who was, like, super smart. He went to, like, law school or something like that, and he is her assistant. So basically he gets her coffee, he gets her donuts, and his parents come in, and they're like, there's so much more to your life than just being an assistant for Madam Secretary. Like, you could be making millions of dollars, but you're just working for the government or whatever. So the Madam Secretary finally comes up to him and basically said in six months, because she knew the potential that he had, she said in six months, I'm firing you. And he's like, why? She's like, because I know that there's so much more to your life than just being my assistant. Now you can work towards area of being like my advisor, foreign policy advisor or whatever it could be. She's like, but in six months, right? So that was a couple episodes. So today she says, remember, you know, in five months I'm firing you. And he's like, are you really going to do it? She said, you need to move up or you need to move out. And I like that. Not that God's going to kick us out of his plan, but his purpose isn't for us to become stagnant, to just settle for being mediocre or settle for having a lukewarm relationship with him. But sometimes what happens if we're not willing to assess our heart, because usually it's in the challenges, it's in the working on our heart, it's in all that hard kind of stuff that we're really able to grow our relationship with God. Just like when you have your first fight, it's like boyfriend and girlfriend, you overcome it. You feel like, wow, like we moved forward. Our relationship grew and it matured on behalf of this argument that we had or this disagreement that we had. When we work on those issues with God and we actually allow him to work in us, it's then we're able to grow. It's then that we're able to mature when we allow him to work on our heart. So instead of staying at a mediocre level or, or except, instead of staying as a lukewarm Christian, look inside your heart and say, God, what is it that needs to change in me? Where is it that I need to go? What is it that I need to do? Who is it that I need to you know, repair a relationship with that I don't have to stay stagnant, but I can actually move up. And I'm not saying up in a sense of, you know, climbing the ladder to become, you know, the executive over Christianity. I'm talking about becoming everything that God has called you to be. And it takes looking inward at our heart. So we don't want to come to this place where we just settle for mediocrity, settle for second best, or settle for just coasting along at a pace that keeps us comfortable. Because when we really look into our heart and we're really honest with ourselves, it's probably going to make us a little uncomfortable. And then when you realize that there's something going on between you and someone else, it's probably going to make you even more com more uncomfortable. So all these situations, again, it goes into really having this self-examination of who we are so that we can become everything that God has called us to be. In Romans 1, 29 to 32, it says, They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice, they're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them but give approval to those who practice them. Now, what I like about this scripture is it says 
it starts with like murder, like pretty intense, right? It starts out with some t intense things. And then it goes down to disobedient to parents, foolishness, faithless, heartless, gossip, slanderers. I think a lot of times it's easy for us to be honest with the big things. You go out and you get drunk one night. You go back and you're like, God, please forgive me. I can't believe that I did this. But, Lord, I just, you know, ask for your, you know, I, you know, your forgiveness on this. I repent from the sin that I've done. Or you go out and you have premarital sex. And then it's like, ah, oh, you feel really bad. And it's kind of like, Lord, forgive me for this, right? Because we're talking about being honest with ourselves. But there's parts of us. That, again, that's why I mentioned the thoughts that are even going on in our head or the, the parts of our heart that no one knows because those are the parts that we need to deal with. And not just the big things because when we self-examine, because I remember when I was younger and, you know, Pastor Lauren would say on Sunday mornings, like, make sure you're examining your heart before you take communion. I was like, well, I didn't really, like, you know, do anything, like, crazy this week or anything. And I just kept thinking about the big things. But we have to be aware of the small things, too. The intentions of our heart. The, the being proud in a certain situation. Because a lot of times we think being proud is like an overall lifestyle that you shouldn't be proud overall life, right? But how many of you know there are certain situations that when you're dealing with someone, it's easy to be proud about that situation and be guarded. And even just a certain situation. And what I like about this verse, which, you, you know, it's like a love-hate like. It talks about not even doing them but having the approval of people who do these things. Because a lot of times we find ourselves in situations where people are gossiping. I wasn't the one who gossiped. That's usually what, I mean, I wasn't the one to say anything. But did you stick up for the person who wasn't there that everyone else was talking about? So that's why I love in the scripture it talks about all these different things. And then it says they do not only do them but they give approval to those who practice them. We have to be able to look into our hearts and even see the little things. God sees the little things. And it's awesome to know that we serve a God who cares about the little things. Who wants us to become everything that he has called us to be. And in doing so, he cares about those little things. And it's funny, I like, I, I was going to say I had a mom. I still have a mom. But she was the one who prayed for everything. Like, and it was crazy the things that, like, I was like, Mom, like, I lost my keys. And it was back when Mike and I lived at our other house. And it had the main church master key. It had the CFM building master key. It had the Mount Zion Community Center master key. The Mount Zion Community. Every single building you can think of that the church owned, it had every master key. And then my car key and my house key. And I lost my keys. And I was like, Mom, this is so, you know, I was looking everywhere around the house. And she's like, we just need to pray that we find your keys. I was like, Ugh. you know, why would we, you know, why would we pray that I find? And my mom was like, because God cares about the little things, Ashley. And I had to keep reminding myself over and over that God cares about the little things. Because it's like you get like so totally sick and you're supposed to perform the next day. And it's like, that's like a big deal, right? But then I just lost my keys. Who's lost their keys before? Not a big deal. Well, it's, it is a big deal, but not the end of the world. And we prayed, and you'll never guess where I found my keys. At the very end of the driveway, because I took the garbage out. And as I took the garbage out, that steep hill, if you've ever done it before, <laughs> I was pulling down the garbage, and somehow my keys slipped out just right at the corner. But it was snowy. So I didn't even see. My mom prays that I find my keys. The snow melts and my keys are sitting. I take the garbage out and my keys are sitting right there. A little rusty. But all that to say is God cares about the small things and we need to care about the small things. Because there's a lot of things going on in our hearts and in our minds that no one knows about. But it's those small things that are going to, if we allow them to work in us, help us to become Everything that God has called us to be. And that's what I love about when, we, when you come here and you hear these messages. It all comes back to our heart. Because if we can't get our heart in the right place, we're never going to become everything that God has called us to be. Because he cares about the heart. He cares about our intentions. He cares about our thoughts. He cares about all those things. So when it comes to self-examination or it comes to knowing yourself, don't just be honest about the big mistakes in life, you know, because again, I think it's easy for us to even get focused on the big mistakes in life and think that those are going to hold us back from becoming everything that God has called us to be. But how many of you know, 
Everyone makes mistakes. Thank God that God forgives us when we repent of our sins. He forgives us of those mistakes and still allows us to become everything that he has called us to be. Big mistakes, yes, we all get it, but there's so many little things going on inside of us. And it's so important to be aware of those small things. I want to ask the band to come forward tonight. Tonight, we get towards the end of the year, every year. I like to allow us to have time to work on a heart. Because even though God doesn't work in calendar years, a lot of us want to go into the new year making new resolutions and becoming a new person. And I would challenge you to say, Lord, I want to become everything that you've called me to be. But in doing so, I have to look at my heart and I have to see what's going on inside my heart. If you guys can just stand with me tonight.